Will you marry me? <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> this is you added this on purpose. Um, I mean, there are older people with longer journeys. <laughs> so. And it was probably coming from the nose, but you still didn't realize it. Okay, I need to do some more blotting. Hi friends, great to have you here. I've never done a video like this. It's the first q and on the channel to celebrate the 1 million subscriber milestone. I'm really grateful for this. I didn't think it will come so soon. So I asked you what you wanted to know about me and 550 of you sent in your questions. There were work questions, personal questions, strange questions. It's gonna be a bit of a longer video. I've added timestamps below this video so that you can jump to a specific question if you want. Let's jump in with the first question. Which country are you from? I'm from Iran. We moved to Austria when I was around 10, 11 years old. And then I went to school here. Um, I moved to Canada to do my studies. I worked there for a bit and then I moved back to Austria. That's where I am now. How old are you? 43. Next. Where did you go to school? Are you 43? I'm 43. Oh, okay. Am I not 43? <laughs> Wait, are you already? I just had my birthday. Oh, that's true. Oh my God, you are so Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, that's from my husband asking how old I am. But yeah. <laughs> okay just because I look so young. So where did you go to school? So, okay, if we start with my primary school, I went to school in Tehran. Then from middle school, high school, I went to school in Austria. It was an international school. So that's where I get my accent from, I guess, because people say I have a weird accent. They don't know where I'm from. Um, I'm from an international school. I have an international accent. That's probably where it's from. Then after that, I went to Canada to study. And yeah, that's basically my schools. What did you want to become when you were a kid? I wanted to be an astronaut and work for NASA. How do you see your channel's future? So right now, I reached the goals that I ever... Actually, I went beyond the goals that I set for this channel. So I guess it's time to reevaluate where this channel's going. So that's something that you're going to see if you stick around. <laughs> do you have free time and if so what do you like to do that isn't work related oh i know <laughs> this is you added this on purpose okay do you have free time and if so what do you like to do that isn't work related that is a very difficult one to to answer I can say oh, cooking, but I don't really like cooking. <laughs> Workout, I don't really like it. I just do it because I have to do it. Um, walking to get some air. Gardening, yes. So I've I've started yeah a few years back to to like plant some things I can eat. Some plants that are eatable. <laughs> Plants that I like to eat because I'm not a fan of like flowers or, you know, if they just look nice but have no purpose. So I like plants that have a purpose. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, coming back to what's not work related. Okay, you see, it's really difficult for me to find something because I can say I like to read, but the things that I read are work related, but I really enjoy it. So I don't find it work related, even though someone who sees me read that is like, oh, you're working. I'm not. I'm just enjoying my time. So <laughs> I see I see a difference in your voice in latest videos as compared to two to three year old videos. Current voice seems to be coming. <laughs> I love this. Current voice seems to be coming more from the nose. Is it due to make upgrade or your voice has changed? Okay. So in the old days, so two to three years ago, I would say my voice was coming from a well because it was like, I don't know, with, with the setup, it was an old microphone. So it was like coming from so far somewhere. 
And it was probably coming from the nose, but you still didn't realize it because, because it, this is one of the most common comments I have about my voice. Some say it's a nice voice and a lot say it comes from the nose. It's just how my voice is. I probably should do some type of uh, voice training to make it come from here and not here. But well, I do have a nose problem. I probably have to get it fixed. That one side is always blocked. Maybe that's that's what it is. But yeah, I mean, we did upgrade our 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 mic microphones. And I know a lot of people say that we have an, this type of sounds, <laughs> which we try to get rid of. But yeah, we're, we're working on that. You know, audio is a lot harder to get right than, than I assumed. Were you a good student? What did you study in university? Oh, <laughs> okay, I have to laugh at this one because my husband always makes fun of me because I was too good of a student in school. I always wanted to get A's and I always pretty much got A's in university. I graduated with a medal of academic achievements, which my husband always makes fun of. And what I studied was economics. So I majored in economics and I did my master's in economics. Can you please share your career journey? Okay, so my career, it's a long journey because I'm 43. <laughs> Cut that out. Okay. Um, I mean, there are older people with longer journeys. <laughs> I started off as an economist. I was working for a nonprofit organization in Canada, in Ottawa. There we did research for different publications. We also did research for the Bank of Canada. I found the whole research side of things a bit boring. So I decided to switch. And I also wanted to move back to Austria because I went to school in Austria. So I moved back and then I started to work as a consultant. It was like an in-house consultant for a big company where we had to do different improvement projects. So we had like waste reduction improvement projects, a lot of like process improvement projects. That's when I learned VBA because I wanted to implement a lot of like VBA solutions for the branches that we were consulting. Then after doing that for a few years, no, actually I just did that, I think for a year or a year and a half. And then I made myself independent and I was doing that. So I was doing VBA solutions as an independent contractor. Then I got an offer to go back to another um, department or another branch of this company to roll out a Hyperion solution. And Hyperion then later got bought by Oracle. And this was a great opportunity because they weren't looking for someone as a contractor. They were looking for someone as an employee. And I decided I want to go back and I want to learn about Hyperion and about Oracle. In total, I'd say it was over 10 years. But in the middle, I switched between departments. I was always in the officially in the finance department, but I was the connection to IT. It was kind of like an in-between role because we were building up a system for finance. So we had to know the finance side and we had to know the IT side. I was actually responsible for a lot of the, the rules of the Hyperion system, which is based, which at the time was based on VBA. Then I also worked for a few years in the IT department where I did business warehouse projects. And then after all this, I decided I want to make myself independent and I want to do consulting. I want to do Oracle consulting and Excel. And then in the end, I ended up just doing Excel consultants. I did the Oracle part and doing training on, on this Hyperion system for a year. And then I stopped that and I concentrated on Excel. Do you work for Microsoft? I don't work for Microsoft. Um, I know it looks like I work for Microsoft because I have a lot of Microsoft related videos on the channel. But the reason that I have all these videos is because I worked with Microsoft products, you know, most of my life, especially Excel. So I started the channel as an Excel channel. And then slowly we went into the other products that I was using. And I felt like I want to, to share my knowledge and do videos on that. So I don't work for Microsoft. I'm just an MVP, which is most valuable professional. It's a title that Microsoft gives people who 
contribute a lot to the community who share their knowledge and, and help the community. Is there anything you don't know about Excel? <laughs> yes, a lot. There's a lot I don't know. I mean, anytime I watch another person's channel, so for example, Mike Gervin and Excel is fun. So when I'm watching his channel and he's covering something really obvious that I know for sure, I find something that I didn't know in there. You know, he might use some shortcut, he might do something and I'll be like, oh, I didn't know that. So I always, every day I learn something new. Why did you want to create this channel in the first place? Was it hard at first? So remember I said that I made myself independent. I was a consultant at first, and then I started doing trainings and I, I did a lot of Excel trainings as well. And here I live in Austria, so the language is German, and I prefer to teach in English. And because I wanted to reach a bigger audience, I decided to create an online course. And this was something that I was planning to also give to my students here when I was doing a training, right? So it was kind of like the add-on that I could provide um, to the students. I would give them free access to the course so that, you know, they can revisit all the material later on. So first was the course. And then because I decided I want to, you know, market the course, I will put some of these videos on YouTube. And I also wanted a place to host my videos so I can link to them easily and embed them in my website, right? So that was YouTube. And then I realized that there is this whole community that is interested in Excel and is interested in education who hangs out on YouTube. So I decided that I want to do separate videos for YouTube and, you know, just, you know, share my knowledge and get better at Excel and get better at doing videos. Was it hard at first? Yes, it was hard. The hardest part was when I thought that talking to a camera, recording a screencast is the same as teaching someone in person. Um, I never thought that they are completely different and that it's really difficult to do screencasts and talk to a camera. Do you only do the tutorials on YouTube or do you do consulting as well? So I do tutorials on YouTube. I have online courses that we sell on our website and some other platforms. And I did consulting for a long time. I stopped the consulting last year completely. So it was slowly like I stopped. I only kept a few clients for the past, I don't know, two, three years. And then slowly I completely stopped that side of the business. So now it's online training, um, online courses, online tutorials. How many people work with you on the channel? So when I started, it was just me. Then there was another person who helped me out part-time. Now, currently when I'm filming this, like we have two other people, behind the camera here. Um, so we are three people that are working on the channel and we just hired two other people who are going to help me create tutorials for you. How much prep goes in making a video? Do you talk from a script? Okay, how much prep goes into a video? A lot. Far too much than people realize or far too much than I realized before I started to make a video. So there is a lot of research that's done. There is the script writing. So you do need some type of script to, you know, to have an idea what you're going to say or what you're going to show. Then if it's an Excel tutorial, there is preparing the worksheet. Then there's the filming part and then the editing part. And, and even when you're done with the video, once you upload it, you have to do all the search, you know, with the description, the tags, the the title, what would work, what doesn't work, what's the thumbnail. So there is a lot of preparation. Sometimes, you know, it can take a week to make a video. Do you talk from a script? When I do headshots, I usually have a script. When I do screencasts, I don't use the script. But right now I don't have a script. Were you ever tempted to give up on your YouTube channel? How do you motivate yourself to keep going? Until now, no. I was never tempted to give up my YouTube channel. I was tempted to make less videos at some point because it was overwhelming, like with the courses that I was making to do the one video a week. 
So there was a time that um, that I wanted to maybe skip a week and so on, but I felt like I can't because if I skip one week, then I might skip two weeks, right? So it's like working out. If you skip your workouts, then it's just hard to get back. So yeah, but I wasn't really tempted to to give up on the channel. I enjoy it. I enjoy our community. I enjoy making videos and I'm going to keep doing that. How do you motivate yourself to keep going? I just do it. I don't know. I just, we have a schedule. I like to, <laughs> I like to stick to my schedule and I just do it. There are always new topics to talk about. There's always new things, um, you know, new, new topics to cover. How do you decide what topics to cover? It's based on different things. So if something new comes out from, let's say from Excel, so they release something new, I, you know, do some examples with it and, and then I try to cover it as soon as possible. Sometimes it takes longer because, you know, I want to test things out. I, you know, try different approaches and I don't want to quickly just make any type of video about it. So it might take longer than, you know, other people and their channels. Um, so one is when new stuff come out, then it's, you know, what problems do people generally have? And we try to make videos on that. We get a lot of questions. At the beginning, it was actually all question-based. So any question I had in my classroom trainings, I would try to make a video out of later on. It's also topics that I'm interested in. So I did some videos on Power Automate, Power Apps on the channel. Then obviously your suggestions and your comments on the videos, because you know, we do go through the comments. I try to read all the comments. I know I can't answer them all, but when we come across a question that we think can be answered better in a video, we post a video about that. How do you prepare yourself to release a certain video or training course? Okay, so it's a completely different approach, releasing a video and a training course. So I'm just gonna go with the video because the training course to explain that, it needs a course. <laughs> so let's just stick to the video. So the preparation, well, in terms of, I guess I kind of answer that because that's, you know, the research, first first step is research. Um, next step is, you know, to prepare the workbook, the script, or, you know, whatever is needed. And, and actually when I do the recording, I do a dry run. So I just, you know, do it without recording the whole process. And then I do the recording. And sometimes I have to record like 10 times to get it right. But obviously, I mean, it's edited a lot. So there, are, you know, the video itself, the raw video could be like 20 minutes and the end result is 10 minutes. Are you going to create online classes for Power Automation, Power Apps and Power BI? Yes but one thing at a time. So the current course that I'm working on is a DAX course. That's core for Power Pivot and also for Power BI. So after that, I would like to create a course on Power BI and Power Automate. Power Apps is something that I would love to get to know more, but that requires a lot more of my time. So it's something that I would love to do, but later. Do you think Excel is still worth learning with tools such as Tableau and Power BI out there. Yes, definitely, because with Power BI and with Tableau, I mean, these are reporting tools, but they're just one option that you have. Sometimes you want to slice and dice the data in a different way that, you know, you can't just easily do in Power BI report and you can use Excel for that. And then even the bigger systems like, you know, SAP or Oracle, they all have add-ins for Excel where you can bring in your data and analyze it as you need. What is the one Excel feature that you use daily? The one Excel feature daily. Ooh, that's a difficult one. So, I mean, it really depends on what I do. What I use a lot also for our own internal reporting is Power Query. Pivot tables is something I use a lot as well. How do you manage a work-life balance with regular and sustainable content creation production? Ooh, work-life balance. So that word is a bit weird for me because I don't know if they have to be, well, they are balanced, but one might be more than the other. So in my world, it's balanced, even though I probably work a lot more than, 
some other people I know. So they might think I'm a workaholic, but I think my work life is super balanced. Sustainable content creation production is because we plan. We plan things. If, if we didn't plan things, we'll just be all stressed out. So we do plan our content. We do create things in advance and we do schedule things so we can go on a holiday. So for example, last week I was away for an entire week and probably no one realized because, you know, our YouTube content was already scheduled and went live as it usually does. How much money does your YouTube channel generate and is it sufficient to live comfortably? Okay, so right now where we are, you know, at this level, yes, you can live comfortably with it. It's enough for us to, you know, to support our team, to support what we have. But when I started it, I think even after like a year that I started it, my income was like 70 cents or so. I don't know if it was 70 cents in the year or in the month. I think the first year was probably in the year. Then it was like 70 cents a month. I was really excited that I was getting paid at all for that. If I also want to be a successful person like you, what do I have to do in my life? If you define success that you want to be, you know, happy and do something that you love, the answer is you should do something that you love. So I was... You know, you can be very successful, but be in, you know, have a job that you don't like. But then are you successful or are you not successful? You know, people might see you as successful, but you don't see yourself as successful. So I think it's if you find something that you really like to do, then you're successful. Will you marry me? <laughs> yes. If I wasn't married already. Um, I am married. And I'm happily married for, I think it's 13 years. Is it? <laughs> I guess so. Do you have children? What is their reaction to your online fame? I have two children. I have a 13-year-old son and an 8-year-old daughter. The reaction to my online fame... Well, my son is excited to get, you know, to, when we got, for example, the the 100,000 plate from YouTube, he's really excited about that. He's really excited to get the gold one, hopefully soon. But otherwise, there's no real reaction. They don't really care about my online fame. I don't even see it as an online fame. How did you receive the cut on the right side of your nose? You've noticed. Okay, so I was one year... I think I was one year or less than a year. Um, well, I don't know. I was told I was one year or less than a year. <laughs> and then I fell. Um, apparently, I was standing on a bench in the kitchen. And then I fell. And then my nose was like stuck there. That's where my probably where my wonderful voice comes from. <laughs> so, yeah. And then I did a... There was a surgery. No. Yeah. No, they stitched it back together. But then, because, you know, I was just learning to walk, I fell on my nose again and everything came off. And then they had to redo that whole process. So then it stayed with me. Are you a cat or dog person? Definitely a cat person. How many push-ups can you do? Okay, I'm going to lie and say six. At some point, I could do six. I haven't done push-ups for a while now. Okay, so let's just go with three. <laughs> What are your favorite Netflix TV shows? Okay, I'm not sure if I can say the ones I'm watching. Some of them are too embarrassing to even say publicly. The ones that I really, really liked, Breaking Bad, Stranger Things. These are like my top, top favorite ones. What sport do you follow if you are into sports? No, I don't really follow any sports. And I'm not really into sports. I do sports because I have to, but I'm not really into it. What would you like to share with us? What type of foods do you eat and what types you don't eat? I eat pretty much everything. I'm not picky. I'm the type of person, if it looks disgusting and it smells horrible, I would be like, can I try that? I want to see how that tastes. Do you still enjoy what you're doing as much as when you started? Yes. Yes, I love it. It's just that there are days that I hate it. But in general, I love it. Otherwise, I wouldn't 
you know, continue to do it, I guess. Final question. Knowing what you know now, what is one advice you will give to aspiring online educational content creators that are just starting out? My one advice is if you want to do this, you just have to do it because there's a lot of things that you know, you try to get right. So you do, you take a lot of courses to see how to do it. Then you watch a lot of YouTube videos to see how do you do your setup. You know, there's a lot of like research that you can spend your time doing instead of actually doing it. So I would suggest that you just really take out your microphone, you do an example, and you just start by recording one single lecture. And maybe you upload it to YouTube and then just see if you enjoy that process and if you like it and it's something that you want to continue doing, then you spent more time trying to figure things out. But a lot of people stop and that, that was why it took me also a lot longer to get started. Well, it took me a year because I was spending a year doing research and I wanted to get it right. But then when I came to do it, I realized that, you know, you just, you learn best by doing. That's it. That was the last question. So I hope I answered most of your questions and it was great to have you here. If you watched until now, congratulations, you made it. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. And I'm going to see you in the next video.